So what will you say to him if you ever see him? Um, can I use that word? Can, can. can we will censor it. Just f*** off. Uh, uh f*** you. <laughs> hey there, welcome to Street Talk. My name is Dejong, your host for this week. Do you remember Amos Z? The 16-year-old boy who has been jailed twice for his offensive religious and political comments on YouTube in 2016. Despite his hurtful and offensive views, he had a sympathizers who saw him as an intelligent and articulate young man, unafraid to make his feelings known. There were even a few well-known people who defended him online, saying that he deserved a second chance. He avoided national service just as he was caught up by going to the United States and seeking asylum on the grounds of political persecution, which was granted to him after several months in custody. After that, we heard little about him until the news broke out last week about how he was charged with pedophilia in the United States. So we wanted to see how people felt about him after this revelation, so we are hitting the streets to find out. Have you heard about Amos C? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, recently, yes. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, plenty. I saw on the internet. So what was your view of Amos C when he first started appearing on media like four years ago about his slandering things and everything like that? Initially, I thought he just won a lot of attention. Then subsequently, it is uh, too disobedient and hard to manage and things like that. But then ultimately, I think he's not very sound in the head. Lah. I think it's just very controversial. Many people are like, oh, he's just young and he's doing his thing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, he felt that he had very smart opinions. He had to put so much thought into all his content, so to say, and like research whether good or bad, you know, or whether very biased or not. Yeah. Personally, what I feel is he shouldn't be doing all this. Lah. Like, I have nothing against the fella, nor his views, but this kind of things is best to keep it to yourself. I would say maybe he's just not the most tactful person. And some of the things that he said, it is a sentiment that some Singaporeans may have. It also doesn't mean that I think it's completely correct. But I think there is some sentiments that the government kind of needs to take note of. Maybe we will need more citizens to say it in a more tactful manner. Well, at that time, I thought he's a young man, no evil intentions. And what he did was a little bit politically sensitive. But when I saw the news last week, I find that he has overstepped uh, the legal system, something that's not forgivable. So in light of his pedophilic activities, has your view of him changed? I've always thought that he was a weird fella to begin with. Uh, overall, a negative view, I would guess. Uh, no. Well, it sort of support the fact that he's not sound. Uh. I feel like everyone has a past and like, you know, there's certain things that make them the way that they are today. It is a bad thing to do, but at the same time, like, I do believe that he has his reasons. Lah. I'm, not, I'm not too sure, so I don't want to just cast a judgement just because he has been like charged with something. Four years ago, I was thinking that he's a little bit playful and he want to play the system. The character can be changed, but it seems that it's getting worse and people will view him as a danger to society. Yeah, should be kept in the jail. <laughs> I don't know, I just feel like he's a huge uh, disappointment in this country. <laughs> it has not really changed my perception of him that drastically, but I would say that it is something that is still against the law, and so there is consequences for him to face. La. No, because it doesn't look like he changed at all. He looks like he's gotten worse, actually. No, he still remains, to me, insane. Somebody who's quite crazy. It's fair to say that some people do change, and I would say that um, clearly he has changed for the worse. So in light of his recent developments, he may be deported back to Singapore. Mm -hmm. So would you want him back here? Uh, living in exile or kind of like running away isn't the best solution. Maybe for his parents, they may want their son back. I feel a little bit indifferent, to be very honest, or whether he comes back or not. I think it's better that he's in Singapore than he's in the US. <laughs> so yeah, maybe we can take care of him here better. And like he's one of us like, at the end of the day, like, you know, what, regardless of whatever he has done. Um, sure, why not? I want to <laughs> have a conversation with him, maybe have coffee. I really want to pick his brain and really see what he really thinks about our country as a whole. Maybe away from Singapore is worse. Lah. After all, his parents are still here. Unfortunately for them, that they are getting a lot of unwanted uh, attention. Lah. If he has asylum back in the, in the state side, best to just uh, leave the burden and the taxpayers' money all to the state side. Lah. Because if he comes back to Singapore, he'll probably have to go to jail because of what he said about our former leaders. Lah. No, because I feel like if he comes back to Singapore, there will be more dramas about him. I hope not, but if in any case, if they deport him back to Singapore and Singapore will take the necessary actions against him, then I guess it will work out better for everyone as well. So if you see him, what will you want to say to him? I don't know, man. I don't think I, I, don't think I have anything to say to him. Maybe just like hug him and say like, it's okay. <laughs> Straighten out his life and, you know, 
just be a productive member of society. Try to mix around with people who are caring for him. Uh, we all wish him all the best because he's also a Singaporean. One is, uh, please do not support child porn anymore, that's one. But secondly, I think like maybe for him, I, it's not that I agree with some of the things that he has said, but I do hope that he has that courage to kind of be more vocal about certain things or certain issues in Singapore that should have changed us. So all street talkers have expressed their views on Amos e, past and present. Personally, I feel that Amos e has done a lot of bad things and he should be responsible for everything that he has done. But on the other hand, in light of Mental Health Awareness Week that has just passed, I feel that he perhaps should be given a second chance and also a chance to seek professional help. What do you think? Please leave a comment in the comment section down below. Like this video, subscribe to Happy TV and I'll see you next week. My name is Ter Chong. Goodbye.